So why the five deeps? I couldn't believe the fact that we as human beings had not been to the bottom of four of the world's five oceans, and we know less about the ocean than we do about the surface of Mars. I thought, I have the resources and I have the drive to do it, so why not? Victor Vescovo's already climbed the highest peak on every continent and skied to both poles. An investor from Dallas went deeper into the ocean than any human ever has. And his love for science has... What does it take to reach the bottom of the oceans? You need a very strong will to do that, and you do need a great deal of innovation because this has never really even been attempted before on this scale. The five deeps really, it started with the Puerto Rican trench and no one had actually been to the very bottom. And that was a little over 8,000 meters and that was in December of 2018. From there, we went to the Southern Ocean and mapped the South Sandwich Trench, which really had never been surveyed. It didn't even have a name. From there, we went to the Java Trench off the coast of Indonesia. And then we went, of course, to the Mariana Trench and dove the Challenger Deep for the first time and registered a maximum depth of 10,925 meters on April of 2019. From there, we went through the Panama Canal we went by the Titanic and dove the Titanic five times because it was on the way. And from there, we went to the Arctic Ocean and dove the Malloy Deep. And we were able to dive that three times in three days. As we went through the expedition, we saw that there were scientific advances that we could actually make in terms of mapping, discovering new species, discovering new subterranean features. And so it all started to blend together, a mixture of technological innovation, science, and human adventure. When I first heard about Victor's vision and met him personally, I was very impressed about his incredible spirit and determination. It resonated with me because it's all about technology, innovation, and precision. And I knew that Omega must play a very important role in this project. Yeah, there's a, a wonderful moment where I visited uh, the Omega headquarters in Switzerland, and we were looking at having a watch associated with the expedition. And initially the thought was to have just a normal watch that could survive normal pressures, but it rapidly got into a conversation of how could we make a watch that could survive full ocean depth. And an extraordinary technological tour de force, the team at Omega was able to take the titanium cutoffs from my submersible and fashion them into not one, but three brand new watches that could actually survive. Yes, a lot of pressure, but this project really inspired me. I knew it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Usually for developing such technical timepiece at Omega, it takes at least three years. So to make this challenge possible, we had to be very efficient and take quick decisions. You have to imagine that 15,000 meters corresponds to a weight of 22 and a half tons on the sapphire crystal. We tested the Omega Ultra Deep watches many times to 15,000 meters, but it's only in real life conditions that you know if something is a success. It was possible thanks to our decades long experience producing diving watches, plus the resources and skills of the entire Swatch Group. The legacy of Omega in the deep sea exploration is impressive. It all started in 1932 with the Marine Watch, which was the first production diver's watch. And then it continued. Whenever there was deep sea exploration, Omega always been there in the 50s and the 60s, and now supporting all the explorers. The watch was subjected to the harshest environment on the entire planet, 16,000 pounds per square inch in freezing cold waters. And not only that, one of them has now been to the bottom of the ocean four times and still works flawlessly. The fact that they could fashion a watch that could survive repeatedly that environment is just an extraordinary technological achievement. I'm returning to the Challenger Deep because I'm completely and utterly insane, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we're returning to the Challenger Deep because the ocean is dramatically unexplored. And it's been a wonderful opportunity to invite other people with great backgrounds to join us on the expedition so they can have their own impressions of what we've discovered and provide new insights. Dr. Kathy Sullivan, former astronaut for NASA, former administrator of NOAA in the United States, is a perfect example of that. As an astronaut, I'm probably best known for being the first American woman to walk in space an event that took place in October 1984 on the Space Shuttle Challenger. After last week's dive to the bottom of the Marianas Trench on June 7th, uh, 
Uh, I'm now also known as the first woman to dive to the deepest spot in the world's ocean. At the time span between the first human dive to the bottom of the Challenger Deep and the second was 52 years. And yet on this expedition with just 10 days total at sea, there'll be three forays to the bottom of the Challenger Deep. Yes, uh, 12 people have walked on the surface of the moon, but as of today in mid-June 2020, we've had 10 people actually go to the bottom of the Challenger Deep. That fact, that's really evidence of the radical innovation and transformation that the limiting factor represents. It's a historic breakthrough. I always marvel and sort of mystified at the experience of being in an environment under sea and outer space that I have no business being, really, but we have these exceptional vehicles, the limiting factor, a space shuttle, that lets me explore there and come to understand it better. Present depth, one, zero, nine, one, four, at bottom, repeat, at bottom. With both my spacewalk experience and the bottom of the Marianas Trench, uh, my irreverent friends in Columbus have encouraged me to claim the title of most vertical girl in the world. I think uh, something that actually binds uh, all explorers together is a certain set of attributes. The obvious one is curiosity. We are the kind of people that always want to know what's on the other side of a hill or what's in that blank space on the map. But then you have to combine that with people that have a strong sense of perseverance, that are not afraid to subject themselves to personal uh, physical danger or just adversity. And it's that combination of qualities that we just don't care as much about what happens to us because we're so hungry for that knowledge and we will risk a lot and suffer a lot to achieve that. I was thrilled to be invited to join this expedition because it goes right to the heart of the explorer in me, uh, to be able to go into these challenging, hostile and exotic environments. And then as a human being, just to have the opportunity to ride in such an extraordinary, you know, radically innovative craft and experience the full ocean depth of the ocean myself, uh, it was just an opportunity I couldn't begin to pass up. For me, this project is all about facing new challenges, facing your fears and embracing them. And once again, we prove that it's not about magic. It's about hard work, determination, precision, and creating. Keep creating until success comes. Through the technological mission of constructing a vessel to dive to any point on the bottom of the oceans reliably and repeatedly had never existed before. And the way to actually prove that it could do that was to take the ship around the world and dive in places no one had ever dived before. And so we were able to achieve that mission. At its essence, the reason why I chose to partner with Omega is because we seem to share the same values of precision and innovation and a love for the sea. And I couldn't think of a better partner to have as we go and do all these other expeditions.